Okay, this is gonna be a, a two-part video. The reason being is because the maker and this blade deserve it. Um, both are that good. Um, let's get a little bit into the maker. Rick Marchand. Now, Rick is in Nova Scotia. He is a awesome bladesmith. When I say bladesmith, he forges his work. Rick is one of these guys that makes a knife that a guy like me just falls in love with. He's got this visceral, kind of like post-apocalyptic, tribal vibe thing going that gives his work some character that is so rare in today's world of knives. Rick's pieces could fit in a movie that was shot in, you know, primitive times all the way up into a sci-fi type era. Hence being, just currently, um, Rick's, some of Rick's knives are going to be featured in the new Planet of the Apes movie, which is really cool. So when I say they're kind of timeless, that's what I mean. They have an ancient look that transcends time. Um, Brick is a, a, a guy that forges a knife to be used. And everybody knows that I'm a big proponent of, of, of user blades. Today's knives and their works of art with the heavily engraving and beautiful hand rub finishes are awesome. And if they're gonna sit in a box, that's great. But you put them to use and they, 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 they don't wear too well. Rick ages and gives his pieces this brutal, rich patina that just begs to be used. You're not afraid to use one of Rick's blades. He makes them to use. A few years ago, Rick had done a Muso rendition that he had a blade and it was just wicked and if, if you guys are familiar with Cormac McCarthy He wrote the road and he also wrote blood meridian If there was ever a Bowie knife to be used if they ever make the movie blood meridian, it would be Rick Marchand's Muso Bowie that rendition was one of the best renditions I've ever seen And that leads us into this video at that show, it was Blade Show, Rick and I got talking about knives and about knife design and about high performance steel and, and what Rick was doing. And we had a lengthy conversation about handles. And um, in that video, in that video, in that conversation, um, sorry, my, my boy Max has a ball, a ball fetish and he hangs on like a freight train. Um, in our conversation, it led us to handle design. Max, you gotta stop, you can't play ball right now. And what I wanted and searched for when I was looking for a high performance handle. At that time, Rick had said to me, hey Joe, how about I, I forge something up, like a test type piece, get it in your hands and tell me what you think. And um, here comes Lady too. And that, again, was two years ago. Rick then came to me and said, hey Joe, how about we, I do a smash it? Now. now, if you're familiar with smash -ets, oh my dogs are killing me. If you're familiar with the smash -et, the smash -et was designed by um, Fairbairn. Fairbairn was a officer in the Shanghai police and he's also a British, stop. He was also a British Royal Marine. Guys, stop. You gotta go play someplace else. <clears throat> Fucker. Um, he was the guy that did with Sykes, I guess it was Eric Sykes, did the, the Fairbairn Sykes combat dagger that is so famous around the world and has been used by many and very acclaimed.
he was the designer of the Smashette. You can call it Smashette or Smashette, whatever you prefer. It's 1941, and war rages through Europe and the Far East. U.S. Army officer Rex Applegate is tasked with training Allied agents to penetrate deep behind enemy lines at the OSS School for Spies and Assassins near Washington, D.C. The OSS, or Office of Strategic Services, is a wartime intelligence agency that would later evolve into what we today call the CIA. Applegate's job is not an easy one. In order to train agents in the very best close quarters combat techniques of the day, he turns to British Army officer William Fairbairn. Fairbairn is a trainer for the British Secret Service who previously served in the British Empire's police and military in the Far East, where he gained considerable skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Applegate's collaboration with Fairbairn would soon become one of the most successful partnerships of the war. Fairbairn, who is believed to be the main inspiration for the James Bond character Q, not only helps OSS agents to become deadly and effective in close quarters, but also designs many innovative weapons that serve OSS agents during the war. One of these is the Smatchet, a knife based on the Kukri of the British Empire's Nepalese Gurkha regiments with whom Fairbairn had served. The knife is not only a deadly and intimidating weapon, but also serves OSS agents in many other outdoor capacities because of its size. The Smatchet is a heavy knife of extreme killing power, beautifully balanced and capable of lethal action either with the point, blade, or pommel. And what you've got in the Smashette is a big double-edged, almost gladius type sword, or sorry, big knife that has the feel of almost a bolo or a, a lighter kukri. Now, I had always been interested in smashettes, but to be honest, everyone I ever came across was not of the quality or of the build strength or construction that I was interested in. I've, I've gravitated to very high performance steel. So when Rick suggested a smashette, I was kind of really taken back because I really was intrigued by the design. It's a big double-edged gladius type creature. But again, um, I'm not a big fan of double-edged dagger type blades. They really exhibit a lot of, of the weak performance stuff when it comes to blades. They're good at perforating, stabbing, but they don't do anything else well. But the Smashette had always intrigued me because it looked like it could do everything well. And it basically looked like a modern day gladius. Now. There's not a lot out there on the, these dogs are driving me nuts, but I love them and I don't want to be mean to them. <laughs> There's not a lot out there on the Smashette, which kind of really blew me away. It was designed during World War II. Um, apparently, it was inspired by, by the Royal Welsh Fusilaries Trench Sword, which is a longer sword, and I'll show a picture of it. that apparently was used to great effect in trench warfare. When Fairbairn came along and designed the Smashette, he was looking for an obstacle, uh, not an obstacle, a, a, a blade that could overcome the many obstacles of warfare, as in combat duties plus utilitarian duties. Look at this dog, he's insane. Um, he was looking for an all-around combat weapon, and there's comments where Fairbairn had made that when a soldier picks up a Smashette, he instantly gains all the qualities of a good soldier because it gives him that kind of confidence and that kind of bravado. Um, I was pleasantly surprised to show up at Blade this year and Rick had the Smashette finished. And I had seen some pictures of it before Blade that he had posted. And I, I was just blown away at what he came up with. And this is the piece right here. Now, Whatever that conversation in the pit that night down in Atlanta led to when it comes to handles, Rick was listening because 
He really got the handle right. Um, this knife has so many cool and good positive points and that's why this is going to be a multi-point video because now I'm talking about the knife, now I'm talking about Rick Marchand who by the way goes by Wilder Tools and I'm going to put his website up here so everybody can see it. Not only am I going to just discuss a little bit of the background of the Smashette, Rick Marchand and Wilder Tools, I'm going to get into um, in the next video some actually some cut testing. Now I, I don't cut water bottles, that's not any kind of test for anything. I prefer to use tatami mats. My dog just ran right through the tripod. I thought he was going to knock the whole camera over. Um, tatami mats, the Japanese use for Tamashigiri. Um, it's basically rolled mats, straw mats that you soak in water and they get the consistency of flesh. We're going to roll some mats up and we're going to do some cutting and some thrusting with this smashette and see how it performs. Again, this feels like a bolo in my hand. Um, Stop, lady, get down, honey. And here, I'm gonna set this off to the side. When I say it feels like a bolo, it's got a wicked, wicked balanced feel to it that it, it does. It feels like a big chopper, and I've got dogs running everywhere, so I can't be too crazy with my, my swinging of this thing around. Um, Rick had somewhere got a hold of a smashette. There's the dog getting the tripod. A smashette, some type of template or some kind of dimensional sheet that gave him specs. And he's really tried to recreate it even to guard thickness of the original smashette that was made. Now, the difference is Rick's really done a much better handle than any smashette that I've seen. Okay? He's given it a handle that has instant snap cut ability when it comes to being able to rock and lever. It fires like a big Bowie knife. Guys, get out of here. Hold on, guys. Let me get rid of these dogs. Go. It fires like a big Bowie knife when you go to snap cut with it. It moves like a very, I say like a fighter kukri. It's got some, it's got a lot of speed, but a ton of power. When you rock this and throw it out, it hits like a ton of bricks. If you look, the blade is curved. It will be down. I'm showing you the other side. It's curved down. Very bolo-like, so you know it's got a big belly. It's gonna be a strong, strong cutter. Hold on, come here, Max. Give me the ball. Let it run with it, lady. So you know it's gonna be a big chopper, a big cutter. So it's gonna do excellent when it comes to being a, basically a good woods knife. Chopping, clearing brush, it's gonna chop and it's gonna move extremely well with a lot of power. But then it comes to the double edge of the thrust. And that's where this thing is a monster. You can see as it comes on point, it is just a brutal, it's a mini Gladius. It's basically a, a, a pocket <laughs> Gladius. The handle is wood cord hemp wrapped, and then he epoxies it. So what you basically get is a solid phenolic hemp cord wrapped handle, which is just, I mean, super sticky, super durable. He's got, an, I believe, an iron pommel on here, peened over in the back. So you've got a skull crusher, but also just super solid, super strong. I'm a big fan of these epoxy resin soak type handles when it comes to using cordage and different material. They really seem to work incredibly well for grip. Rick really did get everything down. So just incredibly fast, incredibly ductile, but for a big heavy chopper, this thing has really got a ton of neat attributes to it. I would say it would even back cut a little bit just because it's so sharp and he's done such a nice job. Sharpening both edges. Very patinaed, very rustic blade. This is the kind of knife that you can take out and use and you're not gonna bum out. You're not gonna go, oh man, I wrecked the hand rub finish. You're gonna, you're not gonna do anything to it. You're gonna be able to sharpen it right back up if you need to. Um, the steel is from Aldo. It is, hold on, I wrote it down over here. It is, hold on, 80 CRV2 from, from Aldo in New Jersey. Everybody knows Aldo. Uh, he's the New Jersey steel baron, they call him.
There's so many people that make a really nice knife and they don't do the adequate sheath for it. A knife lives in its sheath. You're gonna be using the sheath more and more. Now, the original Smashette was a wood cord, I believe, canvas covered uh, military type application. Rick's done something so cool here. As he's taken a piece of PVC tube, he's crushed it down, he's covered it in leather, he's ended up doing a piece of cordage like a segeo, so when you slide it in your belt, you can easily sash it in, tie it in any way you want, and it, it's, it's super secure. Great way to carry a knife, you can carry it off the side, you can position it far back, carrying it here. Just a very convenient, great way to carry a big knife. You can strap it to a pack, it's just super well thought out and really tough. Okay, retention on this piece is incredible, by the way. Really fits in the scabbard the way a big blade should fit in the scabbard. But again, put it in, briefly secure it. Draws extremely quick, very fast, super ductile blade. Just a wicked, nasty weapon. I'm gonna put Rick's website address up here. Wilder Tools, awesome stuff. Rick Marchand, awesome bladesmith. Thank you. Also, go see the new Planet of the Apes movie. It's awesome that Woody Harrelson and I believe a bunch of other characters are gonna be carrying Rick's knives. Timeless designs with an ancient, visceral, groovy, apocalyptic tribal feel that is really all Rick's and uh, I, Plus, he's a great looking guy, and he quite possibly could be the best looking guy in Canada. Thanks for looking. Max and Lady, thank you also. Here, I'll, I'll yank him up, say goodbye. Here's the Max man. He's a monster now. He is gonna be a year old in a couple weeks. He's like 60, about 60 pounds of all muscle. Here's his little sister. She's far from little. She's a monster hunter. Here's Lady, she's about 56 pounds. She's my princess. Thanks for looking, appreciate and it. And I couldn't leave out my wife's little dog, Scarlet. Scarlet is a miniature Australian Shepherd and a toy poodle, which means she's the Einstein of dogs. I don't see it, but um, she's super sweet and the, she thinks the bullies are her babies. Thank you.